Good morning to you, my wonderful students. I'm so glad to be on this platform this morning, and I believe you are all happy to see me from your various home. Please stay indoor and keep safe. Our first topic for this term is microorganism around us. Microorganism around us. But before we proceed, let's share the learning objective of this topic. The learning objectives of this topic are, one, you must know the meaning of microorganism. You must be able to identify the groups of microorganism. And also, you must be able to list the various places in where microorganism can be found. What are microorganisms? Microorganisms are tiny living organisms, which cannot be seen with the visible eye, but can only be seen with the aid of a microscope. Microorganisms include bacteria, viruses, protozoa, algae, and some fungi. And the study of microorganisms is called microbiology. In nature, microorganisms is found everywhere. They are in the water we drink, the hair, the soil, the surfaces, and objects everywhere around us. Many microorganisms are diseases causing agents known as pathogens, and many are parasitic microorganisms. Some microorganisms are beneficial to man, especially the saprophytic ones that brings about the decay of organic matter. That is how the picture of microorganisms looks like under the microscope. You can see we have different types of microorganisms here. We have viruses, bacteria, protozoa, algae, algae, and so on. Groups of microorganisms. What are the various groups of microorganisms? Firstly, we have viruses. Viruses are infectious agents that depend on the host cell for them to infect, to grow, and to reproduce. They are made of genetic material, either DNA or RNA. Their shapes are mostly rod-like, while others are spherical. Examples of microorganisms are post viruses seen in children, polioviruses that affect their legs most of the time, measles that are on their skin, and the recent one, the corona pandemic viruses. They are spread through the droplets of air, so it is better to keep away from people that are sneezing or coughing. Cover your mouth and your nose with a nose mask. Wash your hands always or sanitize them frequently. Another group of microorganisms are the bacteria. Bacteria are microscopic single cell organisms that can thrive in different environments. They are both outside and outside organisms. They are either rod-like, that is bacilli, spherical, cocci, or helical spiral. Some bacteria help to, to digest food, disease causing, causing, destroy diseases causing cells, and give the body the needed vitamins for growth. And some of them are used in making healthy food like yogurt. The third group of microorganisms are the one referred to as protozoa. Protozoa are one cell animal. They are found in most habitats. They are microscopic, free living, and come in different sizes and shapes. Examples include amoeba and parasitism. Some are parasites, which causes different diseases. E.g. is plasmodium, which causes malaria fever. The fourth example of the group of microorganisms are the ones we refer to as fungi. Fungi are parasitic, non-green plants that can be single cell or very complex multicellular organisms. They are found in habitats, but mostly they live on land, mainly in the soil or on plants. Fungi are beneficial, especially penicillin and aspergillus. The last group of microorganisms are the ones we call algae. Algae are microscopic green plants with majority mainly found in aquatic environment, e.g. spirogyra and volvos. Where can microorganisms be found? Like I said earlier on, microorganisms are very rare. As I'm standing in front of you in this class, microorganisms is here. 
The first place where microorganism can be found is in the hair. Microorganism do not grow in hair, but they occur in dust and water droplets in the hair through sneezing or coughing. The common microorganism in hair are virus. That is, how, that is where you see people having cold, influenza, polio, virus, measles, and the coronavirus. Another one is bacteria that causes pneumococci, staphylococcus, and streptococcus. The third microorganism in there is, are the fungi. Fungi examples are penicillin, aspergillus, and yeast. Another place that microorganism can be found is in the water. Microorganisms are in the water we drink and the one we use to bathe. But they are groups as follow. The ones in natural water comprises of bacteria, bacillus, cocci, pseudomonas, and especially vibro cholerae, the one that causes cholera, which, are, which, which happens when we injected contaminated food and drink. The, another one is the blue-green algae, which comprises of Anabella and Gnostic. And the third one is protists. They include Camadonanas and Igluna. Wild algae they include green algae, such as Spirogyra and Fulvus. And the last one are the fungi, which are found in aquatic fungi molds and nutrients. My problems can also be found in the soil. These are made up of nutrifying and nitrogen fixing bacteria, streptomycin and certain fungi. Also in the sewage, we have different forms of microorganisms and they include coliforms, such as viruses and non-pathogenic bacteria, e.g. hysteria cola, streptococcus fecalis, pathogenic bacteria, such as vibro cholerae and salmonella type are pathogenic protozoa such as anta amoeba histolytica. And the ones that are found in our bodies are in the food we eat. They are microorganisms, usually establish themselves in human bodies and causes diseases, especially when the body resistance is low. What do I mean by when the body resistance is low? When our immune system is not able to fight infections that comes in, the immune system needs to be boosted so that any infection that is coming in will be defeated. Also, it is seen in infants where their normal microflora is yet to be established. In fact, once the child starts chlor uh, chlorine, is, he has about 90% of getting infected because the, the ants are put in their mouth and these ants they put in their mouth carries infections. That is why you see children most times in the hospital after diagnosis they will tell you they are infected, they are infected. These and many more are the causes of infection in children because their microflora is yet to be established, that is their antibodies. The ability, the inability of body to resist or fight against pathogen are caused by malnutrition when you are not eating balanced diet good food, when you don't take fruits and vegetables often, you are bound to be malnutrited. Then also, when you are stressed and overworked, when you don't have enough sleep, when you don't take enough rest or exercise, you are bound to be infected. Another reason is harmful habits like smoking and drinking. When you smoke and drink at most time, your immune system are down. So if you are infected with any infection, your immunity will not be able to fight it, then it brings you down. And the last one is environmental pollution. For some period now, before there is the lockdown in Lagos states, you will see that the environment is not polluted like it used to be. Why? Because cars are not running, generators of big companies are not running, so there is less infection. You don't see people cough or sneeze most time aside from the pandemic that is going now, coronavirus. So the environmental pollution is reduced. Carriers of microorganisms. 
Microorganisms can be carried by animals. Animals that carry microorganisms are called vectors, especially the harmful microorganisms. Vectors include insects like mosquitoes, house flies, cockroaches, and sese flies. Other animals like rats, dog, and cat also carry harmful microorganisms. That is why it is advised that once you are bitten, especially by a dog, you are supposed to go to hospital for proper evaluations and medication because rabies can lead to death if not treated immediately. With this, we have come to the end of the first big topic, which is microorganisms around us. But I would like to advise you that you should visit the online, the school website for a comprehensive note on this topic. And we are also advised to read your textbook, that is our recommended test, basis uh, excellence in biology for, junior, for senior secondary school by F. Fakaye and essential biology for senior secondary school by MC Michael, please, once you download the notes, copy, read well to understand and answer the questions that follow. You can submit this question online or you write them in your notes. Thank you and see you in next class. Hello, my wonderful students. It's so good to be here again. I hope you are all keeping safe. You are staying indoor. Please try and obey the regulations set by the health ministry. Today, we are going to be looking at our second topic for this time, which is concept of culturing. What are the concepts of culturing and how are these culture solutions prepared? But before then, let's see the lesson objective. The learning objective for today are, is, as a student, you must be able to define what culturing is. You must be able to prepare a culture solution or media. And also, you must be able to culture and identify different microorganisms. What is culturing? Culturing simply involves the techniques of growing microorganisms in special media in the laboratory. It involves the making of sterile medium, inoculating, incubating, and examining the microorganism. By this means, microorganism characteristics such as color, pattern of growth, and appearance can be seen under the microscope. Culture of microorganisms can be grown from water, from plants, and from various parts of human body. How do we prepare our culture solution? Our culture solution, firstly, must be prepared under a sterile environment or condition. The culture solution is called agar. This is and put in a sterile petri dishes, after which you allow it to cool and set in the petri dishes. After some minutes, a heat sterilizer may be used to kill all or any microorganism that is present around the, the petri dishes. A material is then introduced into the inner medium and covered immediately. After covering, you place the petri dishes in a warm place that is to incubate it for a period of two to three days, after which you observe and record what you have seen on the petri dishes. This is a, gra a graphical representation of what a petri dish looks like. From my diagram, you can see the inoculating loop. That is what we use to introduce the microorganism on the agar media. The agar media for me is the pink color, while the bacteriorganism growing on the agar media appears yellow. How do we identify microorganisms? Microorganisms can be identified in here, water, river, stream, by preparing a culture medium, like I said earlier on. The following procedure should be followed. One, get five sterile petri dishes with culture medium and label them K-L-M-N-O. I chose to use this 
you can use number like one, two, three, or any other alphabet. Two, expose the petri dishes label K to the air for 10, for about 10 to 15 minutes, cover and keep it, that is, keep it in a dark place. After which you put in the petri dish that is labeled air, a few drops of pond water and cover it. Then you pick another petri dish that is labeled N and add few drops of river water. You cover that also. After which you take another petri dish and add few drops of stream water and label that one N. The last petri dish is O. You will not put anything inside. That will serve as a control petri dish. Leave all the petri dishes in the laboratory for three days. That is, you incubate them for three days. Observe all the petri dishes for any development and know any differences on each of them after the three days. Record the characteristics of colony of microorganism in each petri dishes. Then record it, record the observation, and then followed by a class discussion. What do you mean by I'll follow by a class discussion? After everything, we all come out with our different petri dishes and we now discuss our findings. With this, once again, we have come to the end of the second topic for this week, which is culturing. For more on this topic, please check the loaded, uploaded online notes via the school website. It's a comprehensive note that will throw more light on what I've just discussed with you. Our recommended text, Excellence in Biology for Senior Secondary School, Book 1 by F. Fakaye, will be a very, a, a, a very good aid for you, study aid for you. Essential Biology for Senior Secondary School by M.C. Michael is also good to be read. Thank you and see you in the next class. Have a lovely day. I remain your sincerely, Mrs. Ayewole Alaba Adepeju, your biologist teacher. Bye.